Storm Duke is, of course, in great position for that already, being top five in points. Doug Kent would like to clinch it right here. He's 21st in the tour now. Nine pin for Doug to start off this championship match in his 30th career TV appearance, first of Ouch. this season. Good news is for Doug that solid nine, obviously a bad break, but if he strikes out, he shoots 290. Normally shot 279 last game. Do the math, Dave. There's his nine pin. And takes care of his mark to begin the title match. Norm Duke has won 22 career championships. Hundred fifty thousand. Plus with that victory in the semifinals over Mike Edwards. He's had a wonderful season, no doubt about it. Fourth in points. Third in money. He's had eight top ten finishes. Leads the PBA Tour in that category. You know what shots else? like that. You know what else, Dave? Duke has made at least five televised appearances the last three out of four seasons on a scale of one to ten. That's awesome. Ace Hardware matchup here in the championship. Doug Ken hasn't won it so long. Can he break the streak? Norm Duke trying to just break through this first title of the season. Doug's got his hands full. You know, Doug only shot 227 the first game, but you know, Doug's won before. He's a seasoned veteran. He's been out here a long time, 17 years. He knows how to bowl. Doug, we don't call him Dougie Smooth for nothing. Oh, goodness oh gracious. The 7-10 suddenly for Norm Duke, who had just been rolling along. That changed in a hurry. Look at how hard he's thrown. He just came right up out of it. Just a little bit too much speed on that shot, and in my opinion, it's the worst break in bowling. Only three times ever on TV. Jess State Rook, 91, Tucson, Arizona, last time. That record will stand. Yet another TV attempt at the 7-10. Early open, and Doug Kent, who must be physically exhausted, take advantage. His son Jacob right behind him. Norm works on the thumb hole, constantly adjusting with that tape, isn't he? He's got cork and tape in there. He's, he says that the cork tends to ride up on him, and he's always moving that cork back down in the hole, get it positioned just right. Oh! He comes in high, avoids a split. 6-10 for him. Other finishers, round of 32 on. You saw Jack Durick down there from Buffalo. He's one of six local competitors from Western New York, including Tom Baker, Brad Angelo, Joe Ciccone, exempt bowlers. Ryan Simonelli, young left-hander, 19-year-old amateur, had an incredible run here all the way to the round of 16. Before he lost, it's him, Chris. Takes care of the mark, does Doug Kent. Local favorites here. Newark, New York, close to Rochester. A little less than an hour and a half drive for Doug, who has racked up unbelievable miles back and forth to his bowling centers to run that big tournament. His wife, Chrissy, has been helping out as much as possible. And they had to find extra support back home in Newark to make sure her position was covered for the tournament they're running so she could watch the show in person. And here she is to watch a strike. Now he's in the championship match. You see it, Doug, Doug learned a little bit from that last match against Duke and Edwards. He's trying to go real, real straight. Winning this game. Yeah, I don't think so either, Doug. Unless Norm keeps leaving pocket 710s. Trying to rebound. Does so. As we told you about, great number for Duke head-to-head -head with Doug Kent. Rochester not far from where we are here. Right between uh, Albany, Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo, the four large upstate New York cities. Connected by Route 90. New York State through it. Oh, late help on number 
number 10, and out she goes. An interesting note. I mean, you know, Norm Duke was the number two qualifier, so he was a higher seed going into this match. Doug Kent qualified number 25. So, so Norm gets choice of starting lane. Norm decides to have Doug Kent start the match, which makes which makes the finish on the right lane and Norm on the left lane. Norm Duke, Patrick Allen, Tommy Jones, Mike Scroggins all have made five TV shows this year. That's to Great match here in the final. Fourth frame, Doug Kent. All square. Double wood. The hooks early or never hooks. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Not always easy here. Sleeper pin in the back. Top foot. Well, this isn't that tough a spare on this pattern, but other patterns get real tricky. But what he needs to do to get to the pocket on that right lane, you hear him say, if he gets it right, it overhooks. If he gets it left, it doesn't hook. So what, what I would do is I would move further right, keep my eyes in the oil, and just fire it right to the 1-3, just like Norm Duke is doing. But strategy different for Doug here. We'll see how that works out. All about adjustments and trying to forecast the breakdown of the oil. How will it transition? Latter stages. Oh, late help. The scout takes out number 10. His wife certainly appreciates that. He almost had a 7-10 as well. Yeah, with. and you see, I mean, you, you're right about the oil transitioning and everything. As you see, he almost leaves another 7-10 on that same lane that Norm left it. But here's the thing. It's not real tough to figure out what to do on this pattern. When you start seeing your ball push down the lane a little bit too far and go a little too long, move to the right, keep your eyes in the oil, pick up the speed so you can stay in that same zone. Oh, you know Norm is so far off the approach there. He is different colored shoes, one for traction. Oh he my. almost had another pocket 710, just the 10 pin. He'll gladly just take that I hear you. <laughs> to deal with. And Randy, you're oh intrigued ever. by his choice of finishing lanes today. Well, only because the start of the match, he leaves a pocket 7-10 on the left. He almost leaves, leaves another one there. He goes back to the left lane and just barely trips the weak 10 out late. Hey, you know what? Norm's won 23 times. 22, 22 times. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. There's his mark with a 10 pin. Both players now, are, they're, they're having a little trouble getting the ball to go flush. So, again, I mean, it... For Norm, if he backs his speed down, he, run, he runs the risk of the ball hooking early. You certainly want, you certainly don't want to go high. I mean, you want to keep the ball in the pocket, but he's got to find a way to get it to face up a little bit stronger in the one three. Move a half to a board right, keep your eyes in the same spot, or maybe even move your target a board left, fire it right at the one three. Lane breakdown. Lane level look at Norm. Oh, right at you. Seven pin. He got a little softer on that shot there. You can see it really check off of the dry boards to the right there. Watch this. This ball's going to super check right about there. And now all of a sudden, without that speed and that weak hand, that ball goes high. But that's high flush and that's a bad break. Things stay very close here in the final. Bounce on that one, but he does convert the seven pin. 